If there's one thing we've learnt over the past two weeks, it's that when it comes to sport, we Aussies have it in the bag. Or the hoop, or the net, or whatever. You get the point. But there was a time when, well, we weren't doing so well. In the 1976 Olympic Games in Montreal, Australia won no gold medals at all. None. No gold medals. It was pretty shocking. So much so that the government asked experts to look for a way to fix things. It was recommended that we started an institute uh, facility and uh, environment to enhance the, the sports that we had in Australia. That's Julian Jones, former Olympic weightlifter and head of performance services at this place, the Australian Institute of Sport. Oh, and he was at its opening. In 1981, uh, Australia Day, January, it was a stinking hot day, I was here myself actually. So there was 12 sports that started with the AIS, um, all of them trained out of that facility apart from swimming, which trained in a, um, the Deakin swimming pool, uh, which didn't actually have a roof on it at the time when we started there. The Australian Institute of Sport offered up-and-coming athletes intense training by the best coaches and gave a big boost to the growing field of sports science. Young athletes were given full-time scholarships at the AIS, where they could hone their skills. And the hard work paid off. Because in the 1984 Los Angeles Olympics, Australia took home 24 medals. Four of them, gold. It's a gold medal to Boone Lugan of Australia! What? The proof was in the pudding or the medals, as it were. The government started spending money on all sorts of elite sports, and the wins have kept coming. The success of the AIS became known all over the world, and soon other countries started copying the AIS and setting up their own versions. We've had lots of international visitors over the years since we've been set up, and a number of those countries have gone away and emulated what, what we've got here. Uh, in whether it be with um, the buildings or whether it be with some of the systems. But fortunately, they haven't been able to replicate exactly what we've had here. Of course, since then, the AIS has changed a lot. Now, every state and territory has its own sport organisation. And professional teams have their own training programs and centres. But some of those are based at the AIS and it still plays a huge role in training athletes and in the science of sport. I've got nutritionists, I've got psychologists, strength and conditioning coaches, biomechanists, skill acquisition specialists. Then we've got sports engineers, then we've got artificial intelligence, we've got physiotherapists. It's quite a moving feast and it's dynamic in nature as to where the best effect of them coming in and working with the athlete. And if you spend any time around this place, you might just catch a glimpse of the Olympians of the future. <laughs>